Social media and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. I would know, it's quite literally my job to know. In this video, I'm going to rank social media platforms based on how much damage I believe that they've caused to society. We'll start with the most destructive, and make our way to the least destructive. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's get right to it. Starting with... X. Formerly known as Twitter. Come on, you knew this was going to be the most damaging platform. I knew this was going to be the most damaging platform. We all knew it. But I suppose an explanation is still owed to the boomers that happen upon this video. While Twitter might not pull the numbers of, say, Instagram or TikTok, it makes up for what it lacks and the sheer amount of influence it has over its users. Everyone loves to talk about how websites like 4chan are a breeding ground for extremists, but I legitimately believe that Twitter has 4chan beat in that department. 4chan has rightfully earned its reputation of being an absolutely monstrous shithole, full of some of the most mean-spirited people on the planet. But Twitter hasn't. Fundamentally, there is almost no difference in the level of extremism between 4chan and Twitter. The only difference between these two platforms is that Twitter users have a false sense of righteousness in their actions, while well, 4chan knows it's a platform mostly inhabited by degenerates. Care for an example? Back in September of last year, I made an animation where Isaac from The Binding of Isaac draws himself holding hands with a demon lady. Now, from my point of view, I saw nothing wrong with this. As a kid, I would often develop crushes on fictional ladies. I mean, look at Cynthia. I recognized she was a bad bitch when I was five years old, and I still recognize her as a bad bitch now. However, everyone on Twitter lost their goddamn mind when they saw this video. Fans of mine before were now suddenly tweeting about how I'm a kid diddler, insulting me, and calling me a horrible person. I suppose the conclusion that they jumped to was that I wanted this five-year-old child to be in a relationship with an adult, which was so obviously not the case. I literally just took an experience I had from my childhood, hiding cringe drawings of me and my fictional crush, and made it into an animation. Now I'm a goddamn p-word? And that's the issue with Twitter. People want to be furious about something. They want to bully someone, but they don't want to look bad. So the compromise the dinguses on this platform have come to is intentionally neglecting context. With that, they create a villain that they are justified in attacking. The absolute worst part is that the platform's algorithm weighs negative and positive engagement equally. So posts that piss people off and get replies are more likely to show up on people's For You page, creating even more pissed off people in the process. Usually, people aren't even arguing about shit that matters. I just saw someone make 111 posts arguing about how every single PAL world design plagiarizes an existing Pokemon. Imagine! Imagine having so little issues in your life that you make your own just to have a sense of conflict. Imagine defending the laziest video game company in the entire goddamn industry, and to top it all off, you do it for free! For these reasons, I can confidently say that Twitter is the social media platform that is most damaging to society. If Twitter is terminal brain rot for Zoomers, then Facebook is terminal brain rot for Boomers. Facebook is, undoubtedly, the most popular social media platform on the planet. With over 3 billion monthly active users, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody that doesn't have a Facebook account. Sure, your friends might not use it, but they absolutely have an account. And that's why it's such a dangerous platform to foster misinformation. It will spread like wildfire. A study by the NYU in 2020 showed us that misinformation actually got six times more clicks than factual news during the 2020 election. And though Facebook may claim they have taken measures to reduce the spread of misinformation, they also went ahead and banned the two researchers conducting this study. That's right! I win! I don't know about you, but if I didn't want misinformation on my website, I probably wouldn't be so defensive towards the people researching it. Everybody knows that social media isn't good for you, but it's really strange to see a website like Facebook go out of their way to defend misinformation. Obviously the increased engagement on misinformation is great for them, but don't you think that they could get the same attention on their website without misinformation? Well, maybe with a bit of time they could find a way, but Zuckerberg has some meats to smoke now! So Facebook will simply keep turning a blind eye to the misinformation propagated by their platform in favor of money, as all big companies who care not for their customers do. For that reason, I believe Facebook is more than deserving of its spot as the second most destructive social media platform on the internet. What bitches got your four things you're doing online? Oh my god, who the hell cares? While TikTok most definitely isn't as politically charged as Facebook or Twitter, I would absolutely say that the platform contributes to a huge amount of brain rot around the world. Of course, I've been throwing that word around a lot, so I think it's only fair that I define what I mean by that. <clears throat> brain rot. 
a debilitating condition developed from consuming copious amounts of internet content. Symptoms of this condition include the inability to function without at least a few hours of social media every day, the inability to think critically, and a lack of sympathy for others. No! With this definition in mind, I think it's easy to see why I focus so heavily on the political brain rot on Facebook and Twitter. But not all brain rot is political, and TikTok is proof of this. Instead of rotting your brain by making you incapable of seeing perspective, TikTok rots your brain by demanding the lowest quality, highest quantity content possible. Every single TikTok star I've seen has almost nothing interesting to say, nor do they make anything of value. Actually, most of the time, I think they're just extremely hot people, and most would eat up the video regardless of what they put out. This goes both ways too. I watch some videos from the men that my lady friends follow, and they have nothing of note to say. What I'm saying here is that hot people are evil, but inclusively. Anyway, the point is, TikTok has masterfully engineered an algorithm that will show you exactly what you want to see. It might not be high quality, but it will find your niche. If you're into hot girls, it's gonna show you hot girls. If you're into video games, it's gonna show you video games, and so on. Now, is it so wrong to give people exactly what they want? I don't know, man. Is it a good idea to hit up your dealer when you're going through withdrawal? TikTok is simply formatted in a way that makes it extremely easy to lose track of time just mindlessly scrolling. When you combine this format with an algorithm that encourages quantity over quality, you end up with a generation of children who are incapable of watching a video longer than 30 seconds. I would know, the average view duration on even my most successful TikTok uploads is like 50% at best. The platform is so brainless in its usage that you don't even need to put in the effort to look for the videos you want. You just keep swiping upwards, and it will eventually find it for you. The TLDR is that TikTok simply serves the most braindead content possible to the most amount of people possible. It is undoubtedly entertaining, but again, there are plenty of entertaining things you can indulge in that you most definitely shouldn't. Anyway, Sex Wings, if you see this, hit me up. Let's play like. I know some of you may be shocked to see 4chan so low on this list, or even on this list at all, but give me a second to defend myself. 4chan houses the absolute bottom feeders of the internet, and I don't think it's a stretch to say that the majority of its user base is horrible, but you know this. I know this. Everyone knows this. Nobody comes to 4chan to be enlightened by a new perspective. They come to the website either because they're already an irredeemable edgelord, or because they want to gawk at the users like a bunch of animals at the zoo. Nothing here is normal. No popular website these days lets you post anonymously like 4chan, nor is there any popular website that is nearly as unfiltered as 4chan. Brain Rot runs rampant through the platform's political board, but even the rest of the boards are self-aware enough to realize this. If you try to start a political argument on any board other than poll, you will get called out for it. This website has indoctrinated a good handful of people into being drooling right-wing extremists who despise minorities simply for existing. But at the same time, I believe that this website is horrible mostly because of how it exposes what people really think when they have the veil of anonymity shielding them from any true consequences. 4chan isn't horrible because there's some secret moral code that everyone has decided to heed. It's horrible because it's a look into what the greater internet would be like if you reduce censorship to its absolute minimum. You also have to consider the fact that, despite how horrible 4chan is, it's undeniably responsible for a lot of internet culture. The original Rage Faces, Pepe, Wojak, Base, Cringe, whether or not you enjoy this sort of language or humor, it is undeniably popular around all the internet, not just on 4chan. The game devs on this platform have also given us bangers like Katawa Shoujo, Snoot Game, and... Minecraft? Yeah, Minecraft actually first started gaining a bit of traction on 4chan. It's most definitely not the sole reason Minecraft is as popular as it is today. The TIG source forums had just as much of a hand in Minecraft's early conceptual stages, but it has a fair bit of responsibility. Notch would turn to V early in Minecraft's development for criticism and critique, then change or implement features based on feedback. There's a reason why Minecraft used to have splash text mentioning 4chan's video game board. Of course, it was eventually removed by Microsoft, simply due to the fact that they didn't want to associate their brand with 4chan. But that kind of proves my point. Everyone knows 4chan is horrible. It's not like Twitter or Facebook, where the big numbers, the public profiles, and the celebrities give its users a false sense of security. The users and the platform itself acknowledge that they are not mentally well. Also, 4chan has approximately 22 million monthly active users compared to Facebook's 3 billion. Sure, 22 million people is a lot but it's nothing compared to the rest of social media. Even if every single 4chan user was a right-wing extremist, it would still pale in comparison to Twitter's 550 million daily monthly user count. When you look at the data, it's just the objective truth that a website like Twitter has most definitely created more extremists than 4chan. For those reasons, I believe 4chan is more than deserving of its spot as the fourth most destructive platform on this list.
And this guy, on my life, he switches it up every single day. One day he's a Muslim, the next day he's a Christian. I swear to you. You guys, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian, Christian, yeah? Yes, I know it's weird and unfair to group two different platforms under one ranking, but I think they both serve a similar niche on the internet. Snapchat and Instagram are both social media dumbed down to their absolute basics. You can message people, you can upload images and videos, and you can browse a bunch of regurgitated content from TikTok and YouTube shorts. One could argue both of these platforms are TikTok wannabes at this point, but neither really do as good of a job as frying dopamine receptors as TikTok does. So if neither of these platforms really do anything out of the ordinary, what issues do they really have upon society? Why self-image, of course. Since there's not a whole lot to do on either of these platforms, most people simply default to sharing their lives. And when you are given a platform to share your life, it's inevitable that you're going to make others feel like their lives aren't as great in comparison. Plenty of studies have shown that both of these platforms can cause ordinarily happy people to develop complexes about themselves. And hey, why wouldn't they? If you were a teenager posting a selfie of yourself and it only got like three likes, meanwhile some random insta thought with layers of makeup and filters gets thousands, I'm sure you'd start to feel like you weren't good enough too. Instagram and Snapchat both embody a bigger issue with the internet in general, normalizing the extreme. It's not like this issue isn't exclusive to women either, there's a reason why self-identified incels hyperfixate on height so much, and it's because social media has perpetuated the idea that, if you're not six foot, you don't get to call yourself a man. It's all so horrible, and it makes otherwise average people feel ashamed for existing. For the record, nobody should feel ashamed for existing. There's just these freaks online that gaslight you into believing that if you don't have a certain cup size or meet a certain height, you're basically worthless. The only real difference between these two platforms is the temporary nature of Snapchat messages compared to Instagram. They disappear after 24 hours. This makes it pretty easy for groomers to get away with the act. But the act of grooming isn't an issue exclusive to Snapchat. It just makes it easier. There have been plenty of incidents of grooming occurring through Instagram DMs as well. Overall, these two platforms are extremely meh in every regard. Every issue they have is not unique to them, but social media as a whole. And everything they do right, some other website does better. They're ultimately forgettable, so they earn their spot smack dab in the middle of this list. Reddit users are obese. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, consider- You- you gotta say more than that, man. That's not enough. <laughs> Reddit embodies practically everything. If something exists, there's a subreddit dedicated to it. It's not like 4chan where you're forced to discuss stuff under a few umbrella boards, nor is it like Twitter or TikTok where you have a constant flow of slop content beamed directly into your consciousness. If you're going on Reddit, you usually have something in mind. There's little to no aimless browsing here, you pick and choose the posts you want to view, and you ignore the ones you don't. Reddit is also a user-moderated website, and this is where most of the website's bad reputation comes from. A moderator's job, generally speaking, is to simply keep discussion on topic and sort out any drama that the users may have. On paper, this sounds like a job nobody except a few passionate users would do. In practice, some of the most pathetic specimen on the internet take up this job every day, just to power trip on people. About two years ago, a guy named Brendan made a post on the Minecraft subreddit. In this post, he explains how his girlfriend had passed away, and he wanted some ideas on what he could do with her Minecraft base to honor her. The reception was heartwarming. People contributed their ideas and sent their condolences, and Brendan would post again a few days later, showing off his beautiful additions to the base that were made possible only through the collaborative effort of the subreddit. It was soon removed by the subreddit moderators. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, the subreddit moderators left a comment, simply stating that Brendan's post broke the subreddit's rules on chain posting. You're typically not allowed to make an update post so soon after the original. Kind of shitty and tone deaf, but whatever. Brendan, understandably frustrated, would go to the subreddit moderators and ask what he did wrong personally. They told him the same thing. No chain posting, no memorial posts, no milking your girlfriend's death for- Yeah, some Landwell moderator decided to tell this guy to his face that he was only making posts about his deceased girlfriend for internet attention. Never mind the fact that the guy is, I don't know, mourning? Looking for any sort of coping mechanism that he can find in these trying times? I guess when you reach the brain rot levels that your typical subreddit moderator has though, you start to forget that people can just post stuff because they want to, and not because they want to increase their epic interweb score. Yes! Speaking of epic interweb score, let's talk about Reddit's karma system. The upvote and downvote system were designed in such a way that users could vote on whether or not a comment or post was relevant to a subreddit's discussion. 
off-topic garbage would be sent to the very bottom of the threads, while the most relevant discussion would be brought to the top. You would think that, with such a system in place, Reddit would be the greatest website on the planet. Yeah, bro, that's disrespectful as shit, bro. The fuck is wrong with you, bro? Stop fucking laughing, bro! Nah, this system is used to create an echo chamber. You can tell people as many times as you want that they should only use the downvote button for a relevant discussion and not an opinion they disagree with, but they're definitely going to keep using it as a disagree button. When there's some schizo babbling about nonsense in the comments, people aren't going to downvote him, they're just going to ignore him. But when someone says something that you disagree with, you bet your ass they're going to downvote him. In conclusion, though Reddit on paper has the potential to be the most productive website, in practice, it's kind of just an amalgamation of all the internet forums from back in the day put into a single website. It's convenient. It can be beneficial to society, but most of the time it's just a place to house internet arguments and weirdos. Discord is similar to Reddit in two ways. It's such a massive platform that it practically occupies any niche you can think of, and it has insanely obese moderators looking for an easy power trip. There's so many positives to Discord, I actually think we should just start with the negatives. Power tripping moderators, I already mentioned. This is just what's going to happen when you have servers with arbitrary rules and a moderation team made up of arbitrarily appointed people. However, that's not the only issue. I mentioned briefly the issue of grooming early in the video when talking about Snapchat and Instagram. Like I said, it's an issue on practically every social media platform. However, Discord seems to have it the absolute worst in this regard. I don't know if it's just because of how easy it is to get a Discord account, or the nature of Discord servers means creepy old people are more likely to be introduced to younger kids, or if it's just the target demographic of Discord that makes it such a popular platform for freaks to gather on. But whatever, there remains only one fact, and that is that Discord has a grooming problem. I don't know how they can solve it, but considering some of the edgier servers I was in before were visited by Discord admins, asking them to stop using slurs, I could imagine that they could take some precautionary measures to stop the exchange of explicit imagery as well. Still, despite this, I feel like the good that Discord offers the world heavily outweighs the bad, and saying that out loud, I can definitely realize how much of a bias I have. I've just met a lot of my closest friends through Discord. I've had so many fun nights just messing around and playing games together with people that I wouldn't have met any other way. The platform has given me a sense of community I feel like I normally wouldn't be able to find anywhere else. Of course, that sense of community comes with some drama here and there, but in the end, it really does feel like all the good outweighs the bad. It's also important to mention, Discord has gotten me a good amount of commission work and has been an amazing platform for what little game and mod development I've partaken in. Every other platform is so uppity about their file limits and sending zip files and such. Meanwhile, you can send whole games as exe files for prototyping through Discord. In my personal life, Discord has been immensely helpful, and I'm sure a ton of other people have had a similar experience as well. That being said, if you're a full-time Discord moderator, you seriously need to- Ah yes, what a shock. The YouTuber ranks YouTube as the number one social media platform. But hear me out. YouTube isn't just the best social media platform because it gives dweebs like me a job that they normally wouldn't be able to have. YouTube is the best social media platform because it's useful to everyone. No matter who you are, how old you are, what career path you are, you will find a use for YouTube. Hell, the fact that you're sitting here right now, right now, listening to me ramble about social media websites for god knows how long is proof that you found a use for it, wasting your time and keeping your ears occupied. However, when you're not wasting your time having fun on YouTube, there are plenty of practical usages for the platform too. Want an easy to follow recipe for dinner? Watch a YouTube tutorial. Thinking about buying a game, but not sure if it's worth it? Watch a YouTube review. Thinking about a vacation and want to get a feel for the areas you want to go to? Watch some travel videos on YouTube. YouTube is the solution to practically every problem pertaining to information you can think of. And it's a beneficial relationship for literally everyone involved. YouTubers get to make a career out of their passion. YouTube itself makes money for the ad revenue and the users walk away with information that they need. YouTube has reached a point where the only issues the platform has are change. Whether the layout is changed, whether the rules are changed, people get upset. And while normally I would say people should be open to change, YouTube is pretty much already perfect. It does exactly what it needs to do, and then some. Now that's not to say YouTube is perfect. YouTube's algorithm is much like TikTok's in the sense that it tends to reward consistent, bottom of the barrel slop. Unfortunately, this isn't an issue with YouTube, but instead an issue with people. YouTube wouldn't serve videos like this if it wasn't for the amount of people that would click on them and watch them to the end. People just dig trashy content, and it's not the website's fault. Still, it's not like quality content goes unrewarded. You can find or make a community on YouTube for just about anything, as long as you do it well enough. There's a tuber for any size topic. 
For example, two of my favorite games from over a decade ago, Team Fortress 2 and The Binding of Isaac, have plenty of YouTubers still playing the game and making content about them, and they've got a pretty sizable following to boot. Everyone can benefit from using YouTube, and that's why I believe it's deserving as its spot as the number one social media platform. Newgrounds is a website dedicated to mostly art and animation, and it's the only website I can really think of that's better than YouTube. There's no algorithm deciding what gets front paged and what doesn't, it's all people, whether those people be the staff themselves or users voting. It's also home to some of the most talented souls on the internet. I've met some of my coolest, most amazing friends through Newgrounds, and though the website's small size makes me feel it's not really a good fit for a social media tier list, I think its mere existence is beneficial to society. Especially now that AI garbage is starting to get normalized, it's one of the last remaining places on the internet where real artists get to shine and be appreciated. And I hope it stays that way forever. So, those were the most popular social media websites ranked on most brain rotten to least. In case you didn't notice, I ranked the websites that discourage individuality the lowest. Want to hear me talk more about the beauty of individuality and how you should be proud of your own weirdness? Then check out my video on Ken Ashcorp. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, consider liking and subscribing. And if you hated the video, leave a comment explaining why. Either way, I'm gonna go browse the internet some more. Peace.